Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Less than 24 hours from now, Soyuz MS-19 will take off from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, headed for the International Space Station with three people on board. Cosmonaut Anton Skaplerov, Klim Shipenko, the movie director, and Yulia Persilid, actress. Yes, they're going to be shooting a movie in space, and this is quite a surprise because a year ago this was not really on the cards. So, um, they're going to spend two weeks on the International Space Station shooting scenes for the movie, and then they're going to return on board Soyuz MS-18, which took off in April with uh, cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky, Peter Dubrov, and astronaut Mark van der Hey. Now, for the return, Oleg Novitsky is going to be the pilot, and Peter Dubrov and Mark van der Hey are going to stay in space for a whole year until they're... Uh, taken down, presumably, in Soyuz MS-21. Now, Soyuz is designed for a crew, minimum crew of two. It's never been flown with two passengers, and so they've been making changes to the flight uh, checklists, and I think there's some changes to the control panel, or at least software in the control panel, to allow a single pilot to operate it. Normally, you would have the commander in the center and the flight engineer on the left performing most of the flight duties. And on the right side, that was the location of the passenger, which may have to do something, but generally were not needed to fly the spacecraft. Now, for the return, you're also going to have a single cosmonaut and two passengers. So I'm presuming that the changes were also made for MS-18 prior to launch. And uh, so is MS-20. That's also going up with the same configuration. It's going to be flying in December with a, a cosmonaut and... Um, space tourist Yasaki Maezawa, the guy that uh, of course made a big splash with Dear Moon, and his uh, photographer for his Instagram. They're going to be flying up for an actual dedicated tourist mission with no crew rotation. So anyway, the movie, as far as I can tell, is called Vizov, which I probably mispronounced it, but it's a Russian term that can actually have a dual meaning, either meaning the challenge or doctor's house call, doctor's visit. And appropriately enough, I think that it's a movie about a doctor that has to go to space to perform a surgical procedure on a cosmonaut who is unable to return because of the condition. So that seems fair enough for something that you can shoot in the relative you know, limited area of the International Space Station. And yeah, this appears to have been a response to uh, an announcement that Tom Cruise was planning to go to space at some point in the future. And Roscosmos and Dmitry Rogozin very much saw that there was a way to one-up this or beat them to the punch and get some prestige by doing this first. They worked with a Russian production company. There's actually a whole reality show where they take a list of 20 actresses and try to whittle them down to the two that would ultimately be picked. There is still a backup crew, and I've honestly forgotten their names, but... They, uh, they're not going because, of course, uh, the, the primary crew has been able to demonstrate the skills needed. Now, this is not like a tourist mission. This is actually taking two... The, this movie director and this actress, they're literally replacing what we're expected to be cosmots. This is going to be covered. This launch is going to be covered by NASA. This docking is going to be covered by NASA because this is part of the regular Russian space program. And there's been a lot of stuff said about that. I believe that Sergei Krikalev was re had a lot to say. He was fired, actually, for protesting this change. Uh, and he was later reinstated because of a uh, protest by fellow cosmonauts. But um, yeah, Dmitry Rogozin has been saying, well, you know, this is us demonstrating a faster training schedule, the ability to get people into spacecraft faster with less training. And uh, you know, it's not like there is no training going on. They're going to have to be able to operate in certain emergency situations. Um, it is interesting that right now or recently there's been laws passed in Russia which would actually make this kind of discussion of internal dissent in the space program possibly illegal to report on. There's a, a new foreign agent law which has been expanded to the point that basically means talking about almost anything related to space could get you into trouble. And since it's a law that's open to interpretation, you know that it can be used in ways to silence discussion. The Moscow Times very specifically said 
that there was all sorts of corruption and money wasted on the building of the Vostochny Cosmodrome, like $150 million has gone missing. And this law would actually make it illegal for the Moscow Times to discuss and investigate this. Anyway, that's, that's a, a big problem for us space fans because, of course, I don't go to Russia. I don't have any specific contacts. I'm not going to Russian places. So I get all my information from people in Russia that are fans of the space program that have been talking about the space program. And now they're not going to be able to do this out of fear of potentially getting arrested and charged on this. Anyway, the movie, look, it, it looks like they're going to be shooting about 45 minutes worth of footage in space. It's a fast two hour rendezvous to the space station. So I don't think they're going to be shooting any specific shots like inside the Soyuz. This will be all set up on the space station. There are, apparently there will be participation from uh, some of the NASA astronauts as well as the, the Russian cosmonauts. And I'm presuming this means that they're going to be able to shoot in the international section of the space station because, hey, you know, the cupola is going to look pretty darn cool on a big screen. It, it, although they say film, by the way, I'm pretty sure this will all be shot digitally because I, I don't think they've flown film up to the space station in a very long time. They did that back in the IMAX era. But uh, also, this movie has, of course, been announced as the first... Uh, first, you know, fictional movie, right, non-fiction movie shot on the International Space Station. It's not strictly true because when Richard Garriott went up as a space tourist, he actually made a, um, a dramatic presentation, let's say, called Apogee of Fear, and it featured performances from NASA astronauts and, cos and the you know, Russian cosmonauts, and it's pretty... Um, well, it's not going to win any awards, but it is it does have the distinction of being the first actual uh, work of fiction shot on the International Space Station. Now, what's also interesting is in the next month, um, while this film crew is in space, it sounds like William Shatner, Captain Kirk from Star Trek, is also going to be in space at the same time. He's going to fly on New Shepard Flight 18 as part of four... Uh, space tourists, well, I believe one of the uh, people is actually, one of the passengers is going to be a representative from Blue Origin. But this is, uh, wow, yeah, he's going to be the oldest person to ever fly to space. This is Blue Origin just pushing up the, the age range with every flight. But yeah, William Shatner, Captain Kirk, crikey, that's that's going to be wild to see that happening. He, I will point out that uh, William Shatner is not going to be the first actor on Star Trek to go to space because... Star Trek has featured um, astronaut Mae Jemison, who appeared in The Next Generation. And there was also Terry Wirtz and Michael Finke both appeared in Star Trek Enterprise. So, yeah, there is that to talk about. Now, William Shatner has had many people ask whether he wanted to go to space before. And indeed, he had a lot of encouragement from Virgin Galactic to do this. But he just wasn't interested in paying the money. That was his response. Now, apparently, a film crew or documentary is footing the bill for this flight. So I guess he's going to actually go to space. So that's kind of cool. Star Trek, of course, has some really interesting plot lines, but there's a wild story in space that I, I just have to share with you. How about trading a vintage spaceship for the skull of a leader? Yeah, there's a Kazakh businessman called Darren Musa, and he has claimed ownership of Buria. This is the second uh, Buran spacecraft that was being built to go to space. It never flew to space because the Buran program shut down. It was 95% complete. It had a lot of its hardware in there. And we've seen this. We know this because we've seen the interior because urban explorers have been exploring the building. And we've recently seen lots of footage from inside this spacecraft that was being built. Now, it, unfortunately, it also got vandalized. It had graffiti plastered over the side of it at one point. And frankly, there's a lot of concern about the state of the building it's in. So Buria is very important to Soviet space history and by extension, Russian space history. There's a lot of people that would like to see this back and like to see it on display. And Darren Musa has wanted money for this in the past. He, he also has wanted to try to sell it to other collectors elsewhere. And it's all been held up in legal limbo. But now he's cl he claims that he's willing to return it to Russia in exchange for the skull of the last Kazakh Khan, right? There was a man named Kenesari Kazimov who has sort of emerged as a folk hero in Kazakhstan recently. Um, this Khan led a sort of revolt against, 
attempts by Russia to colonize the region in the 19th century. So he would be fighting back and leading, uh, leading people in revolution and defense of their homelands. And unfortunately, he eventually got caught. He was beheaded and the skull ended up in Russia somewhere. So it might sound like an odd deal given the unique nature of both these items. The thing is, um, it's not even clear really who owns it. There's a lot of legal arguments one way or another and there has been some movement in the courts. But the thing is, there's a real danger that this building collapses and destroys the contents before this case could make it through the courts. And that would be an absolute tragedy. And frankly, if it was returned in exchange for the skull of a Khan, that would be one of the most metal stories in space um, antiquities ever. I would love to see that happen one way or another. Certainly it would be much better than the alternative of the Buria being destroyed. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank you